Every child up in Wareville liked learning a lot, but the dunce who lived right below there did not. The dunce hated learning the whole schooling season. Some wondered why. Did he have a good reason? Perhaps his id and ego were having a fight. Or could it have been that his hat was too tight? But the most popular guess of them all was that the brain in his noggin was terribly small. But whatever the excuse, hat, ego, or brain, learning was the object of his greatest disdain. Why, even as he sat there at that moment in time, he could hear blasted school bells chiming their chime. And he knew, he knew that that signaled the start of the day's learning for the young and the young at heart. Up there they'd be, sitting neatly in their seats, filling in numbers on mind-numbing worksheets. Then they'd open their textbooks to page 52, where they'd read about bugs and the strange things bugs do, and they'd get a pop quiz from old Mr. McJeff, who's fond of handing out grades B, C, D, and F. An A grade is the only kind he never gives, and swore that he wouldn't as long as he lives. Oh, how it all irked the dunce and made his brain sore, to the point that he just couldn't take any more. And so he decided he had to make cease Wareville's schoolish activities so he could have peace. All day his brain stormed till the thick of the night. Then he figured out how he could do it upright. He schemed up a most daringly, dastardly trick. And no one knows how, but he got it done quick. Up to the school, in the misty darkness he snuck, accompanied by his black delivery truck. Then he loaded up desks, papers, pencils, and such, chalk, chalkboard, and eraser, so messy to touch, and weird science projects that weren't smelly too much, stacks and stacks of textbooks too many to count, cardstock with magazine cutouts ready to mount, teachers' lessons and lectures. He took the whole lot. Everything was gone, gone, gone. A solitary thumbtack was all he forgot. He'd emptied the school from the floor to the ceiling, gloating o'er the fatal blow he was dealing. Then, as a triumphal finish, that grumpy old goof climbed up the fire escape and onto the roof. And without so much as a remorseful feeling, he took the school bell, so there being no more peeling. Ha, 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 snickered he. Then he said with a grin, This will be the end of their education. And at first it seemed like it was. But then the most amazing thing happened. The children, the parents, the town soon discovered. Though the school was as bare as Mom Hubbard's cupboard, learning can't happen anywhere. So they recovered. They learned how sad war is from a man who was in it. It doesn't matter if you're for or again it. With joy they read books at home. It wasn't too hard. And they studied the science of bugs in the yard. They counted their chickens before they would hatch. Then later learned why all the numbers don't match. Ah, yes, how they learned. And they loved it. And then another amazing thing happened. That man, that ignorant, foolish man who was the dunce, realized some things that he never had once. Maybe, thought he, school is more than rulers and rules. Maybe learning is for both the wise and the fools. Maybe it's more than lectures, pop quizzes, and tests. And maybe teachers can be more than just pests. That to learn is more than textbooks, subjects, and such. And those pesky worksheets that pesker too much. That real learning can come in all sizes and shades. And it's what's important and not dreaded grades. And so on that day, that day he who was once a dunce was one no more. He now looked forward to what life had in store. He was no longer young, but he was young at heart, for he had found the secret to true learning's art. And on that day his brain grew, and he loved it. This presentation was sponsored by the book A Heavenly College Education on an Earthly Budget. Go to LeeMartinson.com where you can get a free report that gives you seven hot tips on financial aid and college admissions.